Hi, I'm talking about the Quinta de la Rosa 20 year old tawny port. So where are we? We are in Portugal. Uh, the region where port is grown is Douro. It's named for the river by the same name. And this is where the vineyards are very steeply planted on hillsides surrounding the river. Um, they're held up by walls often and have to be repaired often because it's so steep. They look like they're literally just gonna tumble right into the river. There are over 30 permitted varieties that you can use in the making of port. Now in this one, we have Tinto Raiz, Torriga Nacional, and Tinta Francisca. Now the one to know, if you're gonna know one grape that goes into the making of port, it would be um, Torriga Nacional. These are, uh, this is a red grape. I will get to why this is not a red wine in a moment, but it's really one of the noble grape varieties of the world. And we are going to be tasting a sweet fortified wine in a moment, but these grapes are also made into very high quality dry table wines that are not fortified. And if you haven't checked any of those out, you really should because they're often very high quality at a very, very great friendly price point. So there are two styles of port um, when we're talking about fortified wines, ruby and tawny. Ruby will look like it's named ruby in color and tawny will look like it's named tawny. Um, but it's the same process to start. So the grapes are harvested. They are tread traditionally by foot, but now they're actually machines that can mimic this gentle tread of a foot. The idea behind this is to extract as much sort of tannin and color, but very gently, but very quickly as well. And it was determined that the human foot was just the right amount of pressure to do this. Then the, the, the must is fermented very early on, excuse me, is fortified very early on by spirit, by distillate. And so what happens is it stops the fermentation because it kills the yeast, because yeast, which complete fermentation cannot survive over a high level of alcohol. So what happens is it stops the fermentation, leaving a high amount of sugar still remaining in the wine that has been fortified. Now, what happens after that, um, the styles of port are also very dependent on how they are aged. This is aged tawny in large casks. And the reason why it's so pale is the amount of time that it's spent there. So it loses that, that vibrant deep color over time as it's blended also with other vintages. Because when you see something like a 20 year old tawny or you might see 30 or 40 year old tawny on the label, it doesn't literally mean that this wine is 20 years old. It means the average age of the wines in this bottle is 20 years old, but it's a blend of different vintages meant to have a consistent style year over year whenever they bottle. So let's taste it. So I feel like this still has sort of a hint of red behind it. It has this almost like orangey undertone as these tawny wines get older, they really do become more and more tawny and you lose that sort of red hue altogether. On the nose, there's a ton of kind of caramel, raisins, molasses, kind of holiday spice. And there is a bit of citrus note in here as well, like an orange zest. So let's taste it. So this wine is obviously sweet and is higher in alcohol. I do get this kind of warming sensation from the fortification in this, but overall it's still a very balanced wine. I'm getting a lot of the same uh, flavors that I uh, noticed on the nose, caramel. It's a bit of a butterscotch note coming out on the finish. Again, this kind of, there's a little bit of a raisin note to it, like a um, uh, sultana uh, on the finish, but really, really beautiful. This wine is very versatile. You certainly could end a meal with this just by itself but it's really, really great with a fruit-based dessert. And don't forget, also great with a cigar.